let's discuss two important HTML elements that mean nothing. Div and span are both generic HTML elements that group together related parts of a web page. However, they do serve different functions. They are both null elements, meaning that on their own, they do not augment the page in any way. The div and the span elements have no inherent presentation qualities of their own, but you can use style sheets to format them however you like. In fact, these generic elements used to be the primary tool in web-based design because they allowed authors to accurately describe content and offer plenty of hooks for adding style rules. We still use these quite often, but now that we have more semantic sectioning elements, we tend to use those in lieu of the div and span tag, but they do still have their place in modern web development. A div element is used for block level organization and styling of page elements. It indicates a division of content. We use the div element to create logical groupings of content or elements on the page. It indicates that they belong together in a conceptual unit or should be treated as a unit because we need to do so for CSS or JavaScript. By marking related content as a div and giving it a unique ID or indicating that it is part of a class, you give context to the elements in the grouping. Whereas the span element is used for inline organization and styling, the span indicates a word or phrase for which no text level element currently exists. Again, we primarily use this in conjunction with CSS, where we want to specify a word or phrase to be styled in a particular way. Let's look at a few examples. Here I have a web page that you may be familiar with from one of our previous exercises. This is a basic HTML page where I have several headings, then I have an unordered list, and it is worth pointing out that the list elements contain A tags that wrap around an image and some text. So both the text as well as the image are links to these other pages of my website. Then I have a couple paragraphs. What we're going to use is we're going to use div and span tags to be able to group areas of this web page together. So if I'm preparing to use some CSS styling, I may want to place certain elements in a grouped container so that I can hook them and then style them in a particular way with my CSS. We're going to do this on this top section. This is going to be our header section where we have our H1 and H2. Then we have this list that contains these links. This is more like a navigational section of my web page. And then I have the text-based content. This is the article that has the information that the user is going to read. And finally, down at the bottom, I have the copyright information. This is more of a footer on my website. So we're going to go ahead and use divs and spans. I'm going to select the H1 and H2. I'll cut them by using Command or Control X. I'm going to make a div tag, and I'm going to place the H1 and H2 within the div tag. If we save the HTML and refresh, you'll see that nothing changes on the page. This div element is simply a null block level element. It does not change the formatting in any way. How we would normally use the div element is we would assign either a class or an ID. Now we have not talked about these attributes yet. We will be discussing them soon enough. But what these attributes do is they allow us to assign a unique identifier to the div because on this particular page, we are going to have several div elements. I'm going to select the UL. I'll cut that by using my keyboard shortcut of Command or Control X. Then I'm going to create the div and then I'll paste in the UL. So once again, this div is now surrounding our unordered list, which in essence is our navigation. So we'll go ahead and we'll assign a class attribute of navigation. This is going to be the main content of my page. So let's go ahead and let's wrap these paragraphs inside of a div as well. And this div is going to have a class of main. 
Finally, I'm going to come down to the last paragraph, which is my copyright information. I'm going to create one more div tag and I'm going to assign a class of footer and then I'll paste this information into it. So if I do refresh the page, you can see that nothing visually has changed on the page. That is because these are null tags. So once again, they're not going to really make sense until we start to learn about CSS. But I did want to introduce you to them so you're familiar with the div tag. Let's take a quick look at the span tag. For this example, I am pretending that Sea Life Crew is a phrase that I want to look differently ultimately on my website. So currently this text is just in the paragraph. I want to be able to grab this text and style it in a particular way. In order to do that, I'm going to have to wrap this text in some sort of element. And because I don't want to necessarily make it bold or emphasized, it's better for me to use the span tag. If we save the page and we refresh, you can see that the text looks no different. All we've done is surrounded this by the null inline tag. The div is the null block level tag. The span is the null inline tag. And just like divs, when we're using this in a real project, it is very common that we would assign a class and or ID attributes to these elements so that we could style them in unique ways. In this particular example, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to surround every instance of Sea Life Crew with a span tag. We'll learn more about the class and ID names a little bit later on. As I mentioned, I'm just using the same class name to identify these areas. If we refresh, you can see that no change has occurred. By themselves, div and span don't really do anything, but it is important to understand what they are so that you'll be able to use them later when we get into CSS. One final thing that I do want to show you is that if I was to wrap some text that's inside my paragraph with a div tag and save it, when I refresh the page now, you're going to see how we have a line break that occurs. So I've surrounded swim clownfish with a div tag and you can see that my paragraph has now broken. The reason this is happening is because this is a block level element. This would ultimately throw an error message since you are not allowed to put a div inside a paragraph tag, but I did want to show you the difference between the inline span element compared to the block level div element. So now you know that div and span essentially do nothing by themselves, but once we learn CSS, you'll see how these are going to be a very useful tool for us to use.